morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Glory be to God for another day in which we can consider his holy word and learn to walk in his ways. And for those of us who speak English, the word of God is the King James Version of the Holy Bible. I have a very important message for those of you who are my sisters in Jesus Christ about a deception that has caused many people to fall away from the faith. And it's a very serious message indeed. Please do your best to listen to this message in its entirety. Glory be to God. So I want to begin today in 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 22. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto the unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. In this passage of the Bible, we understand that to be born again means that we are born of the word of God. We can see this in particular if we turn very briefly. Please turn with me to Luke chapter 8, and we'll read verse 11, where Jesus Christ here is explaining the meaning of the parable of the seed. And he says here in verse 11, Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So those of us who are born again, we are born again of the seed, the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. Now, God has not hidden his truth in little nooks and crannies on the internet. God is light and he does not abide in the shadows. The internet, Google, and other platforms on the internet are the devil's platforms. And while there are some very few who speak the truth on these platforms, Verily, I say unto you, if you want to abide in the light, the light is the word of God. And Jesus Christ commanded that his disciples continue in his word, that they be his disciples indeed. And they shall know the truth, and the truth shall make them free. Those of us who abide in the word of God continually we will know the truth. And we don't have to go hunting around doing research on the internet. I want to read a little bit further now in, in 1 Peter chapter 1. So let's start in verse 23 to read to the end of the chapter. Starting in verse 23 of 1 Peter chapter 1. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof fadeth. Pardon me, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Now the gospel of Jesus Christ in the time of the new covenant was written for us very succinctly and clearly, particularly, but in other places as well, in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the gospel, the word of truth that has been preached unto people who are Christians. If you have heard and obeyed this gospel, you've obeyed this truth through the Spirit unto the unfeigned love of the brethren, this is how we become a Christian. So a Christian is recognized in a few different ways. One, they have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. They've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins and filled with the Holy Spirit of God, or perhaps they're still waiting upon that gift if they're young in the faith. Hallelujah. Another characteristic of a Christian is they hear the Master's voice. They recognize the difference 
between the shepherd and a wolf in sheep's clothing. So they abide in the word of God knowing that if they do so, they will not be deceived. But people who come into the faith of Jesus Christ have obeyed his gospel, who don't recognize that they're on a spiritual battlefield, can be taken by the devil without even realizing what it is that has happened. So if we go a little bit further now in 1 Peter, let's start here now in verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So once we've been saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ and had our sins remitted, we've entered into covenant with a living God. That doesn't mean that we're all done. Rather, it means that we are set on the narrow way and the devil now sees us as his enemy. And he's going to try to trick us and trap us into falling off of the narrow way and turning back to the ways of darkness, things that we used to do before we became a Christian. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 28 to understand what this is, how it is that this occurs. This is nothing new. It happens primarily these days on the internet, but that's not the only place it can happen. It can ha happen in libraries by reading commentaries, by reading commentaries that are written in the back of your Holy King James Bible by religious authorities who have departed from the faith. This is the practice of theology written of in Isaiah chapter 28. So let's begin here in verse 12 to understand this. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, but they would not hear. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Taken. This is theology, and it is the serpent seed. You see, the serpent went to our mother Eve in the Garden of Eden and said unto her, Oh, hath God said? Hath God said, Really? Really, thou shalt not surely die? Oh, no, no, it doesn't really mean that. The truth is this. And the woman, our mother Eve, she saw that what the serpent was offering her, that forbidden fruit, was good to look upon, good to eat, and good to make one wise. And she partook of it. This is a reference in the scripture to theology, the wisdom of men, the doctrines of men. It's a reference to things that appeal to our flesh, that look good, and that make us wise. You see, those who seek after wisdom and they look in the wrong places are eating that forbidden fruit. My sisters, there are many, many lies on the internet and in seminaries and in commentaries and in the minds of religious men. The only way that you can know the truth is to abide in the word of God, which again, for those of us who speak English, is the King James Version of the Holy Bible. God has not hidden his light. His light is right there for anyone to read who chooses to do so. The, the people who want to lead you away from the word of God have believed a lie. They are serving the serpent, and they want to appeal to your flesh, to your eyes, or to your mind, your pride. They want you to think, oh, this is good to think about. This is good to eat. They, they want you to think, oh, I can follow this person. They have some secret understanding. They want your money. They want your soul. And verily I say unto you, the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. These people will come to you and they'll say, oh, the name of the Lord isn't Jesus Christ. The name that you should be bowing before is 
something else, a haya, a haya or yahua or some other concoction. And they'll say that that's secretly hidden somewhere in ancient texts, which you've never seen. And verily, they don't understand. Because they have decided to take from the word of God, here a little, there a little, to hold the word of God under a microscope in order to vaunt themselves as having some special understanding so that people will give them glory. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 18. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. Let no man glory in men. You see, Jesus Christ commanded us to continue in his word. And then we are his disciples indeed. And yet then we shall know the truth, and the truth shall make us free. He did not command us to try to make ourselves look special and feel special by looking into the darkness and coming out of the darkness with something that glitters. People who tell you that they've done research and that you should follow them have been given over to a spirit of delusion. And particularly if they deny the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, in Acts chapter 4, this is going to be a short message, but I do want to just make very, very clear the importance of the name of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. And here, of course, we're reading about how Peter is speaking to the people of Israel concerning the healing of someone. Verse 10, he's speaking to the, the people in Jerusalem, the religious people. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. So I'm going to say this again. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And let's read here, starting in verse 8, about the Lord Jesus Christ. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. When we love the truth, we abide in the truth. We don't go looking in the darkness to find some special wisdom so that we can feel special ourselves. We don't follow people who do so because the wisdom of men is foolishness with God. And verily I say unto you that if we desire the wisdom of men, we're partaking of a corruptible seas because Jesus Christ was that sure foundation, that cornerstone 
upon which the house of God is built. And we who are Christians understand that there is no other name. There is no other name. That at the na name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow. People who have believed lies talk about being a Christian, but they don't obey him. They don't consider his word, and they use the theology to prove that you don't have to obey the word of God either, that it doesn't mean what it says, that thou shalt not surely die. And they don't know the Lord, and they want you to depart from the faith and follow them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's go to Luke chapter 8. Starting in verse 9, And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. The devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he wants to take the word out of your hearts, my sisters. He wants to confuse you with theology and research and documentaries and and various writings of men, various theories of men. But the wisdom of men is foolishness with God. And we who love the truth are commanded to abide in the truth. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. I remain here for you. Feel free to email me if you like, or to comment in the comment section underneath the video. In Jesus' name, I am here for you as your fellow disciple and servant of the King. Amen.